Okay, so now for your SUVA equations or your straight line motion equations. SUVA is a system you can use in order to work out any of the five variables, SUVA. So S being displacement, which is the vector form of distance, so it has a direction. U being the initial velocity, again velocity in vector form. V is the final velocity. A is your acceleration and T is the time. You want all of these values to be in your SI units. There are five SUVA equations and the way these equations work are that in each of the equations you have one of the um, other things missing or two of the other things. Um, so for example if we look at this first one we have S, we have U, we have A and we have T but we have no V. In the second one we have S, U, V, T but we don't have A. All of these will miss one of these variables. In your equation sheet you only have four of these equations. That's because this fifth equation you don't need to be tested on. Any of you doing the mechanics module in maths will have to know this at some point. So you don't need to memorize this, but it's just for your understanding of why there are only four, there should be five. Okay, so let's take an example question and then we'll see how we can use these equations. So a car is driving at 40 meters per second and hits a red light. The driver then brakes and the car comes to a stop in 3.5 seconds. Calculate the time, the, the, calculate the distance the car traveled before the car comes to a stop. Okay, first thing we want to do is write a list of the word, the phrase SUVA. What you can then do is then have a list of writing out what variables you actually know from the question. And that can help you then work out which ones are missing and which ones you have to use. So a car is driving at 40 meters per second. So your initial velocity is 40 meters per second and it hits a red light, the driver brakes and it comes to a stop. Now this isn't a value, but you can infer from the question that means the final velocity after this time is gonna be zero meters per second. And then your time is 3.5 seconds and your distance or your displacement is what you are working out. So, you can see we need S, we have U, we have V, we have T, and so we're getting rid of A. So then we look at the, the R4 SUVATs and we say which one doesn't contain A? This one doesn't contain A, so this is what we're going to use to work out this question. So we say that our displacement is equal to our initial velocity, 40, plus our final velocity, 0, all divided by 2, and then times by 3.5, which gives us 40 over 2, which is 20, and 20 times 3.5 will be 70 meters. And that gives us our answer to that problem. These SUVA equations will go on then to help you in projectile motion also. In projectile motion, you can use the exact same equations, except you have to split your motion into vertical and horizontal um, forces or paths. So your vertical paths, what you'll find is they tend to like having something fall from a building. And so in that case, they will never tell you what the acceleration is because you should already know that if something's falling from a building, its acceleration should always be due to gravity. And so its acceleration should always be 9.81 for vertical questions. So let's take an example of a vertical question and see how we would solve that. So now a vertical motion we have a ball being dropped from a building. It takes the ball 10 seconds to hit the floor. How tall is the building? So we can list our SUVA again. So we have S, U, V, A, T. S is what we're trying to work out. U, we know it's being dropped from a building, so you can infer that it's being dropped from rest. So we say that our initial velocity is always gonna be zero meters per second. Our final velocity, we don't know. And so we can't say anything about that. A, like I said, because it's falling due to gravity, our acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared. And our time is 10 seconds. With these vertical questions, or even horizontal questions, you have to be very careful of what is positive and what is negative, especially in your projectile motion questions. Purely because, let's say you had a ball being kicked from the ground and it arcs up and over. You have it traveling in two opposite directions in terms of vertically. It will first travel upwards and then it will travel downwards. 
you need to make sure you're defining one direction to be positive. So in this case, where we have a ball falling downwards, I'm, re I'm defining the downwards direction to be positive. If there was a follow on to this question where the ball would hit the floor and then would travel upwards, that would then be a negative displacement because it's traveling against the direction that I've already set out to be positive. But for this one, nothing is traveling in the opposite direction so we can keep the positive values for all of them. So if we've got uh, S, U, we don't need V so we can get rid of V. And so we have S, U, A and T. Which one is without V? That's gonna be S equals U, T plus half a t squared. So if we get rid of this, we can say that s is equal to zero times t, so that becomes zero, is then plus a half times 9.81 times 10. And this would then give you an answer of 98.1 divided by two, and then that would be uh, 49. 0 0.05 and that would then be your height of this building and then you have your answer they won't always ask you to calculate displacement they can ask you to calculate any of these and you have to be adept in using any of these uh, four equations so keep practicing good luck